Hi folks, this is Jay. We're looking at Craig Blomberg on the Historical Jesus uh, Studies. This is what he says about the authorship of the Gospels. He says, contrast this with what happened when the fanciful apocryphal Gospels were written much later. People chose the names of well-known exemplary figures to be their fiction, fictitious authors, Philip, Peter, Mary, James. Those names carried a lot more weight than the names of Matthew, Mark and Luke. So to answer your question, there would not have been any reason to attribute authorship to these three less respected people if it were true. That sounded logical, says Lee Strobel, but it was obvious that he was conveniently leaving out one of the gospel writers. What about John? I asked. He was extremely pro prominent. In fact, he wasn't just one of the twelve disciples, but one of Jesus in the three, along with James and Peter. Yes, he is the one exception, Blomberg conceded with a nod. And interestingly, John is the one, only gospel about which there is some question about authorship. What exactly is the dispute? The name of the author is in, isn't in doubt. It's certainly John, Blomberg replied. The question is whether it was John the Apostle or a different John. You see, the testimony of a Christian writer named Papias, dated about 125, refers to John the Apostle and John the Elder. And it's not clear from the context whether he's talking about one person from two perspectives or two different people. But granted that exception, the rest of the early testimony is unanimous that it was John the Apostle, the son of Zebedee, who wrote the Gospel. So now I'm going to um, listen to uh, more of uh, Blomberg. Spence New Age Wisdom. Rather remarkable that someone who's had an illustrious career as a university professor in a particular field could fall for something like this and write two books one of which was published by a almost reputable academic press. But it's out there. Uh, a brand new book that is a very good book uh, this year by a man named Robert Van Voorst uh, on the evidence for Jesus outside the New Testament has one lengthy introductory chapter which does nothing but refute the various people throughout uh, the history of modern scholarship who have tried to deny that Jesus ever existed, notwithstanding the fact that there is all kinds of non-Christian evidence from the ancient world to support that. That stuff is out there. People know about it, and an informed response needs to be made. Then there's a, a second category that I've labeled distortion or misrepresentation of recently discovered evidence. Now, I'm using recently very generously here, as in within the last 50 years or so, given that Christianity's been around for 2,000. The Dead Sea Scrolls, most of you undoubtedly will have at least heard of them, discovered in Israel just after World War II, have both in their initial finding and then in the 1990s, after a flurry of translation efforts completed the previously untranslated fragments, have at times spawned all kinds of sensationalist claims in the media, many of which are simply not true. One of the strangest, and uh, she continues to write even as we speak, are the writings of an Australian scholar by the name of Barbara Thiering. I had the privilege of speaking in Australia for three weeks in August and was running into people who had heard about her work uh, in a number of different contexts, who argues that uh, because of what we learned about Jewish backgrounds from uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Jewish community that uh, uh, went out into the Judean wilderness and created a kind of a commune and, and set up religious rules for themselves, that we can now go back to the New Testament and decode it and discover that all of the main characters, Jesus and Paul and the various apostles, were actually Essene Jews and also members of this uh, monastery at a site called Qumran. Nobody in the scholarly world to my knowledge, of any spectrum, uh, of any place on the spectrum, has accepted this theory. But it's out there, and it's sold more copies of books than anything I'll ever write, which uh, means that I need to continue to worry about the problem of envy. Again, um, it's important to note that you'll get these scholars who do esoteric research in Kuhnman and all these different things in Gnostic Gospels, they'll write a book and the public will run after it. But 
again it comes back to you being a student making sure that you don't just go for the popular reads that you go to more uh, deeper studies where you read widely where you read conservative scholars uh, where you read academics that are more reputable um, and I would ask you to do that